Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. The problem I'm solving today was asked in the Cephite hiring challenge. I recently took this coding test, and in this video, I'll explain the question and walk you through my solution. Alright guys, let's get started. The problem is as follows. Given a list of integers, find the maximum sum of a subarray. Step 1, input reading. We start by setting up input using a buffer dreader, which allows us to read lines of input from the user. The first line of input contains a comma-separated list of component names, such as wardrobe, draw, shelf, rack. This line is stored in a variable called first line. We then perform basic checks. If the input is empty or null, we print an error and exit. After validation, we split this input using commas and store each component in a string array named components. Step 2. Reading relationships. Next, we use a loop to read the relationship of each component with another. These lines look like, draw is to wardrobe, shelf is for draw, rack is 5 shelf. We store, the numeric multiplier of each component in a map called component value is, and the unit it's related to in a map called component relations. We also perform validation checks like, whether is is present in the sentence, whether the number is parsable, and whether both a number and a unit are provided. If any line fails, an appropriate error message is printed and the program exits. Step 3. Defining the base unit. We define wardrobe as the base unit, meaning, one wardrobe equals one unit. So we insert wardrobe into a new map called final value as with value 1. This map will eventually hold the total computed values for all components relative to the base. Step 4. Computing relative values. The code then tries to compute the values of other components based on their relationships. It does this in stages. First, it checks if any component is defined in terms of draw. If so, it multiplies that component's value with the wardrobe's value, which is 1, and stores it. Then it checks for relationships defined in terms of shelf, and multiplies them by the value of shelf. Then similarly for rack. However, here lies a major issue. We're trying to use values of shelf and rack before they've been calculated, which can cause problems or lead to null references. This is where the code logic breaks in edge cases, or certain input orders. Step 5. Filling missing values. We then loop over all components. If any component is missing in the final result, we check if we know what it relates to, and if that related component's value is already known. Then, we compute it by multiplying its multiplier value with the related component's total value. This step tries to recover any missing calculations that were not handled earlier. Step 6. Sorting and output. Finally, we create a list of all final calculated components and their values. Sort them in descending order based on value, and build a result string that says something like 20 rack equals 100 shelf equals for 00 draw equals 800 wardrobe. The format is value plus component separated by equals keyword. We then print this result to the console. Flaws in the problem or logic. This code might fail test cases if the question has no clear hierarchy or cyclical definitions, or if the input order does not match the expected dependency tree like defining rack before shelf. Also, the code relies on specific order and naming, and does not recursively resolve dependencies, which can lead to incorrect values. In a real-world solution, we'd ideally need a graph traversal algorithm like depth first search to calculate values in the right order. So there you have it. I hope this video helped you understand how to break down problems logically, and also when to question the question itself. If you've encountered a weird or flawed coding problem before, drop it in the comments, Let's discuss. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next.